this morning let us turn our ears our mind to listen from god's word and for that let's read uh, second peter chapter 1 verses 12 to 15 second peter chapter 1 verses 12 to 15 adugonde ningal arinjavarum lebichu satyathil orachu nilkunavarum ennu verigilum idu ningale eppozhum ormippikkuvan naan orungi irikkum നമ്മുടെ കർത്താവായ യേശു ക്രിസ്തു എനിക്ക് അറിവ് തന്നതുപോലെ എൻ്റെ കൂടാരം പൊളിഞ്ഞു പോകുവാൻ അടുത്തിരിക്കുന്നു എന്ന് അറിഞ്ഞിരിക്കിയാൽ ഞാൻ ഈ കൂടാരത്തിൽ ഇരിക്കുന്നിടത്തോളം നിങ്ങളെ ഓർപ്പിച്ചുണർത്തുക ഉണർത്തുക യുക്തമെന്ന് വിചാരിക്കുന്നു നിങ്ങൾ അതെൻ്റെ നിര്യാണത്തിൻ്റെ ശേഷം എപ്പോഴും ഓർത്തുകൊള്ളുവാൻ തക്കവണ്ണം ഞാൻ ഉത്സാഹിക്കും we need to be reminded why do we need reminders reminders are about the things that we know it is not stressing it's not new thing you know it so i want to remind you right reminders are needed from trustworthy people now here peter i'm not going to go in detail because we have looked at this reminders but we are going to new dimension today new aspects today but remember this peter who was an elderly person a bishop he was saying i need to set this reminder we are so blessed with our elders you no know, last couple of weeks ago one of our elders said ready to go yeah you remember that peter is in that state he is saying i am ready to go any time i may go but before i go i want to set some reminders for you these reminders are very important reminders for us these reminders are, are the pathway for us signposts for us unless we keep these reminders in our mind we can get distracted we can get no uh, away from the path we can get destroyed what are those reminders if you want to know there are so many things that we have mentioned before but second peter chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 first of all you must understand this though i read chapter 1 we are going to chapter 3 where he again reminds them of one particular aspect first of all you must understand this that in the last days scoffers will come scoffing and indulging their own lust right second peter chapter 3 verses 3 and 4 and saying where is the promise of his coming can we read that in malayalam please avante pratyekshara vaagdatham evide pidakanmar nidra konda shesham sagalom srishtiyude aarambhathil irunnathu pole thanne irikkunu ennu parnu svanta mohangale anusrichu nadakkuna parihasigal parihasathode andhyakalathu verumennu visheshal arinju kolluvin be reminded that scoffers will come scoffers will come and say where is the promise of his coming where is jesus you said jesus is coming parousia is the word greek word which means coming but that has become a technical term for second coming of jesus christ where is the coming of jesus christ they are mocking they are scoffing at people i i was just imagining as i was preparing this message late night as today if those people were alive today they would have said this is what we said 2000 years have gone where is your jesus and that same scoffers are there today why do they scoff because they want to indulge in their own lust that's very clearly mentioned there was three scoffers will come scoffing and indulging their own lust why are they scoffing and why are they denying this promise of his coming they don't want to be aware that christ is coming that's the reality why do they don't want to know or remind themselves that christ is coming if christ comes there is eternity there is judgment eternity for those who are leading a holy life judgment for those who are not leading a holy life i remember one 31st december night we have this watch and night service uh, it, this happened about 20 years ago after our wedding uh, it's more than 20 years that we have wedded now so we were uh, in one particular church and after the 31st midnight service everybody was saying to each other that was a tradition in the church maranatha what is maranatha lord come soon and so one auntie got offended why are you scaring me yeah because moment you say i know that she said very openly i know that i am not going so you are scaring me so maranatha which can be a comfort to us for some it is scary thing but for a child of god it is not something scary it is our hope Peter says this is a hope hallelujah lack of time we used to you uh, know uh, go for conventions from our city to the main city 100 kilometers we used to hire a bus and go in that 
And so after the convention, all elderly people are sleepy, tired, and as they come back, young people are so energetic, we would think, Samaya mom, redotil nyan, every sleep is gone, because I do not know where is our hope, right? We have this hope. So Peter said, be reminded of this hope. Be reminded. The scoffers will scoff because they want to indulge in sin. The scoffers will scoff because they know that they are not going there. They know that there is judgment. They are scared. And for their benefit, they are scoffing. The reality is Christ is coming. Hallelujah. How many of us are sure as we are reminded of the inflation and different things around that's happening around our lives is a reminder that Christ is coming. Hallelujah. I can see some smiling face. Sandosha Mohangal Kanikinath Pratyashayana. Hallelujah. We are joyful. Other day somebody, a young person said, I have settled this issue. If I die, it's fine. I will be in heaven or whatever. I have settled this. You and I need to settle scores that when Christ comes, we are ready to go. Peter is saying, be reminded. Hallelujah. Of the hope. Why do we forget? We forget because of delay. No, in, in Peter's context, the, the delay of parousia is a reason to say that denial, no, delay is not the denial of promise. Christ may delay to come, but that's not a false promise. It's a true promise. We can, we can trust Jesus. I mean, how many of us know that we can trust Jesus? When he said, I will come just as I go. It's a promise that we can trust. He's the one who went into grave and came back. Hallelujah. Just think about that. He said, Jesus said, I will be killed. I will be buried. I will rise up on the third day. And the disciples saw the resurrected Lord on the third day. Hallelujah. If Jesus promised that and fulfilled that promise, disciples know for sure. Peter knows for sure. The promise of Jesus is trustworthy. Hallelujah. As I go, I will come. When? When will he come? They thought soon. But what Jesus was probably saying is, I will come suddenly. Right? I will come suddenly just like thief enters a house without any warning. Jesus is not a thief. This is just a comparison where it says, just like thief come to a home without any warning. Christ is going to come. In the busyness of our life, we will see our Redeemer coming in the clouds. And you and I who have the hope, who live in holiness, we reach heaven. Hallelujah. We'll be gathered up in sky. Hallelujah. How many of us are joyful about his coming? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Avanda Pratyashe Kurchara Pullavarka. Hallelujah. Eid Nimisham Sandosha Tode Ayripan Karim. Avanda Vagdatangal Vishasipan Karim. Marichatun, we are to Verum on the Parna, yes, we are to one uncle. Munamatana, we are to one uncle. Ah, Kartava on the Parna, Yampoya the Bola, Marangi Verum, Ah, Wagdatil, Namukekalo, Vishosikam, Tamus Chalum, Wagdata Maripoganilla, Hallelujah, Wakuparna, Mara Takarta, Hallelujah. The Lord who will not change his words, He is faithful, He is coming. Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's have that hope. So eventually when we drift away from that promise, when we are misguided by scoffers, when we are distracted from the focus that we have in Jesus and his words, Peter is saying, you need reminders. Hallelujah. That is why he reminded, as we have already discussed, he reminded them of the precious faith. He reminded them of the precious promises. And then we know We've just talked about, he has promised us valuable virtues. Amen. All those who want to go to heaven should have valuable virtues. We can read that. I'm just running fast here. No. Uh, chapter 1 verse 5, 2 Peter chapter 1 verse 5. For this very reason, you must make every effort to support your faith with goodness and goodness with knowledge. Amen. All these are the virtues that are needed in a follower's life, disciples of Jesus' life. Along with your faith. What is our faith? Faith in Jesus Christ. Our spirituality, our religiosity, our way of life is a faith that is mentioned here. We all have faith, right? We have a faith, religious faith in Jesus Christ. 
Our salvation is of faith. His coming is of faith. Our, our, our eternity is of faith. Along with this faith, we need to have virtues. What is that goodness? We won't have time to deal even the first one. The first one there is along with faith, we must have goodness. We have this uh, no, uh, usage here. How are you? I am good. That's good to say that, right? Even if inside it is burning, we are, we are tuned to say, I am good. But if you sit with them, you know how good they are. All right? And there are some theologians who would say, you should not say you are good because God alone is good. We are fine is a better usage, right? But we understand every word has its own connotations and conventional meanings which changes over the time. We are good. God is a good God. We have this song that we sing, God is good all the time. I don't hear that. You don't know that song, Don Moen's song? God is good all the time. God is good. So one preacher asks, how about you? God is good all the time. How about you? Are, are we good all the time? Good times and bad times, that is the virtue. Let's remember, the God who has called us is a good God. Hallelujah. As we worship this good God, we must have that goodness in life. Is that true? Does that make sense? Should we be good to somebody else? Outsiders, just, was, just as God was good to us, God is good to us, we must be good. I'll, I'll, I'll finish in a couple of minutes, though I have a long message here ready, uh, sitting till 4, 4 a.m. and preparing all this, but that's fine. This is a spiritual food, but I, I, I'll try to give a taste of that. And let's receive this. The word for goodness there is aretein. Yeah, Greek word. Don't have to memorize that. But goodness, the meaning there is moral excellence. Just like we read in Matthew 5, 48. Be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. He is a good God. You and I need to be good like our heavenly father. Children, if, if you are seeing some vision, wake them up and say, be good. Right? We need to be good because our heavenly father is a good God. A perfect God. You and I need to be perfect. Is that possible to be perfect? Yes, we can desire to be perfect. Our perfection was lost in the garden of Eden. Jesus came down to give that perfection back to us. We will regain that image of God. And that is why we are joyful on the promise of God. That when he comes, we will be like him. Hallelujah. How many of us can rejoice in the presence of God? When he comes, we will be like him. No diabetes, no sugar. We don't need insulin. We don't need any medication. We will be like him with a glorious body. Hallelujah. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let us be excellent. Children, listen to me. You must be excellent. Don't do a mediocre work. Don't do something just for the sake of doing you do it excellently because our God is an excellent God. He does things excellently. So there is one, one parent who went to one uh, no, motivational speaker. I'm just not naming them. I have heard this first chat. Mother went and said, you told about somebody, our child who can excel in everything. I want my child to come first in the school. Is it possible? He said, he said absolutely, it's possible. So he, she was so curious, asked, how is it possible? And eventually he said, you must you know, put him in a school where there is no other children studying with him. He will be the first one. What God expects from us is not competition to be first. God expects us to do the best of what we can. If you do the best of what we can, that is the goodness that God is expecting from our life. Hallelujah. How many of us would commit? I would do the best of what I can. In loving my children, in loving my family, in loving God, in serving God. I will do the best of what we can. And I know that's why we come to the church as best as we can. Right? Physically appearing in every way. Come as best as we can. Offer our sacrifice as best as we can. Because our God is an excellent God. He's looking for people with excellence. Don't say, you do something, don't say, God will take care. That's not what God is teaching us. God is asking us, I have given you gifts and talents. Use them excellently in the best way possible. And God will do the rest for you and me. Hallelujah. I was not an excellent student in the, in the schools and colleges. But there's a time where I decided to do the best of what I can. That is where the change began. Hallelujah. If you and I can dedicate our life, surrender our life and say, Lord, I want to do the best of what I can. God will take care of us.
Hallelujah. Along with our faith, we need goodness. Let's close our eyes and pray. Lord, help us to be excellent in all that we are doing.